This is Jack Jackson. In this video, we're going to look at a two-sampled, uh, one-tailed t-test. So at this point, you should be able to go ahead and work this problem on your own. So we're going to think of this one as an exercise. We're going to read the exercise, pause the video, have you work it yourself, and then come back and check your work. An educator is interested in the effect of content knowledge of a professional development workshop given to high school teachers. She gives a test of content knowledge to a sample of teachers who completed the workshop and also gave the same test to a sample of teachers who did not complete the workshop. Summary statistics are given below. Is there enough evidence to conclude that the workshop was effective in increasing content knowledge of teachers? Notice that you're given the mean, standard deviation, and sample size, both of the sample of participating teachers and the sample of non-participating teachers. Work this out and come back and check your answer in a minute. Press pause now. Well, as you know, the first thing we need to do is to decide what sort of test or procedure, inference procedure that we're doing. And be sure that you check that all the conditions are satisfied for using that type of test. Notice here that we're testing for difference in means of two independent samples. Uh, the population standard deviations are unknown and we can let's assume that the distribution of differences in means is approximately normal. Uh, that wasn't explicitly stated, but without that we cannot go on. But let's assume that that actually happened here. If that's the case, then we can go ahead and use a two sample t-test. Now when we do that, we start the test, we want to state our hypotheses. Notice that we are interested in a specific, specifically higher score for the participating teachers, which is sample one, than the non-participating teachers, which is sample two. So this is a right-tailed test. That means that the null hypothesis, H naught, is mu of the differences is zero, which would be that you're assuming that there's no difference. And H alternative is that the mu of the differences is greater than zero. So notice that we assume that there's no difference here. If we're trying to show that there's a difference, we operate under the assumption that there is no difference, and then we go forward from there. So the burden of proof is on the researcher. Now, this is built in the calculators with the app and the calculator. So here we go. We can use the calculator, a TI-84 or TI-Inspire, for example, which is what I'm going to demonstrate here. And I have the screenshots going across here. 84 screens are on the first row. Inspire screens are on the second row. Um, the first uh, TI-84 screens here, I'll talk you through it real fast. You hit stat and then choose left arrow to test. Choose number four, two sample t-test. It's going to ask you for data or stats. Click on stats and type it in. Notice x1, x bar 1 is the mean of the first sample, 75. S sub x is the standard deviation of the sample, 1, which is 12. N1 is 15. The same thing for the second sample. There's an arrow down, so be sure you go down and we get, uh, we have to enter the alternative hypothesis. Since this is a right tailed test, the alternative hypothesis is that mu1 is actually greater than mu2. We will always use the non pooled, so select no there for my class. If we click draw, we'll get this last screen. If we click calculate, we'll get the next screen. So when we hit calculate, we it restates the no, alternative hypothesis. Mu1 is greater than mu2. It gives us the test statistic. T star is 1.05 roughly. And most importantly, it gives us the p value of about 0.1496. Uh, it also computes the degrees of freedom, which we don't really care about, but it's used to develop, make sure that we're graphing and working with the right t distribution to compute these numbers. After that, it's just repeating the numbers that we already gave it, down arrow to see the rest of them. If you press draw instead of calculate, you're going to get the picture here. This is the t-distribution with this 37.47 whatever degrees of freedom. And the boundary of this region right here is our, our uh, t-test statistic, 1.05 something. And it's a right-tailed test, so the area is only to the right of that that's shaded. And that shaded area, since it's a one-tailed test, has area alpha. If this had been a two-tailed test, we would have gotten this same area, but we would have doubled it to get P. I'm, I think I just said alpha. I meant to say P. So this area is not alpha. It is P, the P value. Uh, get the same sort of thing on the uh, TI Inspire. 
you go to a calculator screen, hit menu, choose number six in this menu in the back that says statistics. Then down here, number seven, which is stat test. And then over here, number four, which says two sample t test. Comes up with this screen. We click on this and choose stats. So you have cho two choices are stats or data. Again, choose stats, click OK. Fill in this just like before. You do need to be sure right here before you hit OK that you go down all the way to the bottom so that you can choose the alternative hypothesis um, there, okay, that mu1 is greater than mu2. And you're going to be sure that you choose non pool Those are the two options that are on the next screen. I don't have pictured here. And then once you get all of that in, including the mu1 greater than mu2 and non pool then you click OK. And it comes back with this matrix here that has all the answers. If you down arrow, you get a few more information here. But again, the most important part is notice we got the same T values before and most importantly, the same P value. So the P value is about 0.15. Now that allows us to make our conclusion. Now notice they didn't really actually give us an alpha value here, which is really a problem because you would need to decide on it. Somebody needs to decide on an alpha value. But the usual suspects are 0 0.01, 0 0.05, and 0.1. And the largest of those is 10% or 0.1. And even with the largest one, we see that our p-value here of about 0.15 is larger than alpha. So with any of those usual things, uh, usual values for alpha, we would fail to reject the null hypothesis. So what is our conclusion? Our conclusion is a two-sampled right-tailed t-test was performed, which produced a p-value of 0.15 so there's not sufficient evidence provided by this data data to conclude that the professional development workshop increased content knowledge now I do want to notice that this does not say that the workshop made no difference in other words it does not prove the null hypothesis but it does not give enough evidence to definitely support the claim that the workshop did make a difference either so notice that the participating teachers uh, did have a mean of 75 whereas the non-participating ones had a mean of 70. So it looks like there's a potential, uh, there's definitely an increase there of some kind, but we don't know if it's due to the workshop or if it's just due to the fact that we just randomly picked a sample that happen, happened to have a slightly higher mean. So we cannot conclude that the workshop actually made a difference, but this certainly doesn't conclude that the workshop made no difference. It was basically inconclusive.